In this video, I'm going to show you how I created this image with this diorama from start to finish. Welcome back everybody, Barry Mountford here. In this video, yes, we're gonna be speaking exactly how I got the shot from start to finish, what camera gear, lighting gear, and the whole post processing in Photoshop. So if you're new to the channel and you wanna see more of these images, don't uh, more of these videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, flick the notification bell so you can see exactly when those videos are posted. Um, so we will start off with the camera gear. Now I've been using the Nikon D750, which is a full frame camera. I had that fitted with a Takina 100mm 2.8 macro lens. Now I've specifically used the macro lens uh, because I find shooting in the dioramas, if you use the macro lens, it gives it a bit more of a, obviously the more compression of the background, so it'll blow, blow out that background to give it that nice poker effect. Um, but it'll also, it kind of gives it that bit more of a realistic look to it because you can get nice and close uh, to any edges or any figures or cars, whatever you're using, um, and it just literally just the background just falls away and helps create that more realistic look. So that's the camera gear that I'm using now. Don't get too hung up about the camera gear because you could actually use uh, any camera. You can use your iPhone, you can use any phone, any camera. Um, I would recommend using obviously the camera uh, DSLR with interchangeable lenses to give you more options um, shooting these dioramas, but that is the camera that I chose to shoot this. Now, the lighting. Now, I cannot stress how important the lighting is to get this look. The lighting itself creates creates the mood, it creates the image. Um, you're able to create shadows where you want, highlights where you want, and that's super important when trying to create these realistic looking images from toys. Uh, I just kind of stress enough how important the light is, um, and it's super fun as well once you start. Uh, which I'm going to show you this whole setup um, you can just be as creative as you want and you can put light where you want take light away uh, where you don't want it um, and it's very easy to do once you, you've get the hang of it okay so we'll start with the main light um, and I'll talk about the gear I'm using the Pix Pro Pika 200 fitted in a wavy beauty dish now I've got that straight up pointing straight down but I've got it shooting through uh, a really inexpensive five and one reflector okay so I'm using just the translucent panel on the reflector um, which I'm shooting that light through and I'm doing that purposely so I can create a graduated light coming across the actual diorama. So that's the main light. Now the reason I'm doing that is because the graduated light I could have, if I wanted to shoot it from the front, the hot spot of the light would be here and the fall off of the light would come this way and that graduated light would come across the diorama. If I can move that around any point of that um, the shoot through part of the, uh, the diffusion panel on the 5 one reflector. Okay, so that gives us a nice graduate light from either angle, wherever I wanted to position the main light. So that was the main light. As you can see, it looks pretty cool anyways, uh, but it's just given a nice light, exactly how I wanted it, basically. Yeah, the second light, I'm using a uh, Pixel 4 City 600. That's fitted with a uh, snoot and a grid. Now I fitted it with a grid to create a really nice tight light source, light point light source. Um, and I was trying to create some nice shadows casting through the fence and the actual uh, garage lean to whatever that is I'm not too sure actually I think the garage carport we'll call it the carport shooting through there so when I added smoke later to the shoot I knew I was going to get some sort of light rays coming through those uh, those gaps and also was creating a nice highlight uh, on the cars on the car bonnet and around the wheels as well uh, and I pointed it specifically to the edge of the car so that would happen also so it's creating that nice highlight and shadow combination which is what makes images what creates a good image um, now on the background I'm using a speed light a Pixel 580 Mark II fitted in just a soft box and um, I've specifically like that so when I come to do the processing in post it's going to make it it's going to help the effect okay so I've, I've lit it like that so we've got the image first image for the top down which is like that you can see the second image with the snoot and now you can see the effects of the last light switched on and the shot taken which is the speed light and that's the effects there now so pretty much that is the shot out of camera that's exactly what we uh, we've took in camera um, with the lights now the next step was to add some smoke to the scene and again this was to help to help build 
the drama and the atmosphere in the image. So I've literally filled the whole room with smoke. You couldn't, you cannot see your hand in front of your face. It's just, it's filled with smoke as much as I can get through there. And that's really to create, try and create these light rays coming through. And um, it's kind of to try and recreate the light rays coming through the trees, which I've added in post, but we're going to show that further down the line. So that was the whole point of that. And um, so that was the smoke added. So now we've got that image in camera, we want to take that into Photoshop and we want to start showing how I've built it in Photoshop. So we'll do that right now. So here we are in Photoshop. Now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to edit the image uh, in this video. I'm just going to show you layer by layer exactly what I've done. Um, and hopefully you guys can follow along. But if there's anything you guys want to ask, please hit me up with a, a question in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to ask any of those questions uh, regarding the lighting. Um, the gear I've used or the post processing in Photoshop. So make sure you hit me up with a comment down there below. Okay, folks, down there below. Make sure you hit me up with a comment in the comment section in Photoshop. Right, so this is the image out of camera. And as you can see, it looks really cool. Anyways, um, just as it is. Now, it looks cool, but it wasn't the vision I had. That's not what I wanted to create. I wanted to create a moonlight effect uh, to the image. Now, one of the mistakes I did make uh, in camera is that I didn't set my white balance to make it more blue. Uh, I should have changed the white balance of the camera, um, which was a little bit of a schoolboy error on my behalf, but I'm able to kind of fake that in Photoshop and I'll show you exactly how I'm going to do that. So what I'll do, I'll start with each layer and I'll explain exactly what I've done as I've went and as I've went through the whole process of creating the image and I hope you folks will be able to follow along. So the first layer I've created is a selective color layer um, and basically what I'm doing here on the selective color layer I'm going up to the drop down menu and I'm just affecting the neutrals and the blacks and I'm adjusting them to create this darker area more sharp shadows sorry not more contrasty shadows not sharp shadows more contrast in the shadows um, just making them a bit more black okay so I've done that I've got to remember obviously when I'm shooting in camera we're shooting raw so nothing's been done there's no sharpening there's no contrast added what I'm doing now is adding all that to the raw file uh, to complete my vision that I had when I wanted to take the shot so that's the selective colour. Now, the next process was to add another adjustment layer, which is a uh, photo filter layer. And uh, now this is to kind of fake the effect that I should have done in camera with the white balance. So if I switch it on, off, you can see it's giving like an overall blue tone, which is what I was going for, to try and recreate kind of a moonlight effect to the image. Um, so to add a photo filter, you just use the adjustment layer panel down here. If nobody's familiar with Photoshop, so you can, that's all of the adjustment layers that you can add. Uh, and there is the photo filter right there. So that's a photo filter there. You can see that there, you can change the color. You can, there's, there's already default colors there, or you can go straight in and change the color there wherever you want. Okay, so that's what I've done there. So I'll just delete that. Photo filter, so we don't need that one, the blue one. So the next process was to add the trees in the background. Now, as you can remember, we created that graduated look, uh, sorry, the graduated light across the background, across the gray background. Now that was purposely done like that because I knew obviously the light coming in from the side uh, with the gridded light um, would create this effect. So I've done that purposely. And if I switch that on, you can see in the background, it's added those trees in the background, which looks pretty cool. Now I've added, a Gaussian blur to that tree line. And the reason for that, if I switch off the blur now, them trees become really sharp and that really spoils the effect. You can tell it's fake, it just doesn't look real at all. So that really spoils that effect. So I've had to create, I've had to blur them tree, the tree line to kind of blend in with the out of focus areas in the back of this image, okay? So that's exactly what I've done there. So that's that done. Switch that back on there and you can see just fades in there lovely it's um that's working really well so the next step now this i've actually added more smoke what i've done is i've shot the smoke uh floating about in the studio on a black background and i've used some flashes and i've lit the smoke um and i've shot it on a black black uh, black background why have I added more smoke when I've already filled the room with smoke and added, it just needed that little bit more drama in front of the car that I didn't quite get uh, when I've shot it in camera. So I'm able to add a little bit more smoke in post and that's exactly how I've done. So if I switch that on, you can see there it's added the smoke 
Um, let's move this over. So that's added more smoke there, so you can see it's kind of to the right hand side of the image, the smoke there and below the car. Um, and it's starting to build up a little bit more atmosphere in front of the car. Now the second layer, I've added a gradient map to, which has been clipped, linked basically to that smoke layer. And I've done that because I wanted to take away the actual, um, I'll change that to a point now, the actual smoke from the top, and I just wanted to kind of rise them from this, the top going up the side there. So I've created the graduated uh, adjustment layer so I'll switch it on and off. You can see the effect of that there. It just kind of took some of it away. Um, and then I've also added a curves layer to add a little bit more contrast to that too, to not make it too white. Um, and then I've added a levels layer to the overall image to try and bring them blacks, um, reduce the depth of them blacks and bring them back up a little bit more because it looks a bit too dark. Now the second, uh, this not the second, the next layer, I've added a dodge and burn layer. I switch it on and off, you can see exactly where I've affected the image well. I've actually just pretty much just highlight, uh, went over and dodged the highlights on the car and on the ground just to make them stand out a little bit more. So I switch that on and off, you can see the difference there. So then the next layer, what I've actually done here is I've actually created a stamp of every image below, all, all, sorry, all those layers below, I've kind of combined them all and created one image to that point. And then I've took that into Topaz Labs detail to sharpen the whole image. Now there's an easy way you can do it, I'm going to show you now. So if I go Shift Alt Command J E, it'll create a complete stamp of every layer before below. So it'll compress all them and create one copy. Okay. It won't um, but obviously all the layers aren't affected below, it's just creating a copy of all of those layers. Now, one way you can do this if you haven't got Topaz Labs, you go to filter. Uh, other, if you've got the high pass, you can hear me MacBook kicking in now, like so. The fans are, the fans are going berserk. So as you can see here, I just I change the radius until I start seeing the edges of the vehicle come out, and then I know that's that's where I want it to be. So I click OK, and then we'll go to a drop down menu where our blend modes are. We'll go change the blend mode to overlay. Now if we zoom in. You can see how much that sharpened the image. Just enough. It's just subtle, but it's enough. So that whole sharpening process has affected everywhere, and I don't want that. So I would add a layer mask, and I would go Alt, add layer mask, and that's created a black layer mask, and that's hid that sharpening effect on that layer now. So what I want to do is just paint in exactly where I want the sharpen, sharpening to affect the image, which will be around the car. So we'll grab a brush, grab a white brush, just reduce the size, and then you will just paint over the whole car where you want it, where you want it sharpened. Okay, and you can see on the layer mask there, it's painted away the black to reveal everything up below it, which is the sharpened layer, all right? So that's another way you can actually do it. Um, but I've actually used Topaz Labs Detail 3. It's quite similar, but this process is the same apart from using a different filter. But I've actually linked, I'll actually link to up here uh, where I've showed in another video three easy ways to sharpen images. So I'll link to that up here now uh, so you can go there and follow them. There's three easy ways you can actually sharpen your images. Now, the next process is I wanted to add more smoke. I felt that below the car there just wasn't enough smoke rising from the ground and um, so I wanted to create that a bit more smoke so I've added another smoke image that I have in my catalogue uh, and to do to change it from the black and the white so you don't just see if I change that normal this is what you would see if I change that normal blend mode you'll see like there it's at 48% so we'll put that up that's the smoke layer there so you can see I'm on a black background um, and you can see the black and you can see the smoke so we'll just change that back down to 48% where it was before. And this is the trick. You need to change that layer to screen. And that basically hides all the black and just reveals the white smoke. Okay, so that's what creates that little bit of haze down below. Um, and I've just I've brushed it out from the top here on the layer mask. So you don't see any above here. It's kind of really more dense down the bottom. Now you can see it's quite white. The smoke looks quite white. Obviously, I've smoked, smoked is white, but I needed to blend in with the image. 
And to do that, I've added a color fill and I've clipped that color fill to the mask below so it's only affecting the smoke. So if I switch that on and off, you can see it went from the white to more blue and it kind of blends more in to the rest of the scene and gives that uh, effect that it's actually, it was there, it was part of the smoke that we used when we had the smoke machine on. Now the last step is using my color grade. Now my color grade is literally, it's a color grade I've came up with that I add to all of my images to kind of give my look or my style. Um, well that was the last, that's the last step in that process uh, and I'll just show you that full screen there. So there you go, that is the whole process from start to finish. That's exactly how I've got the shot. Now each of the images that you see in the previous video, um, that whole process, the whole lighting scenario, the whole post processing was exactly the same on each image, um, apart from the, the composited image where I added uh, a guy who I shot in the studio to the Beatle, uh, standing from the Beatle that was a little bit more involved, um, which could be a whole other video uh, completely. But yeah, so to recap, um, the Nikon D750 Takina 100mm 2.8, the lighting gear was the Pika 200, the City 600 and the 580 Mark II Speedlight. Um, you can see the setup in the video, so again, to take away from this, if you haven't got those lights, don't worry, if you just think of that whole lighting setup as a principle, you can pretty much add or use the lights that you have uh, to your disposal and kind of get a similar effect, okay, so it was pretty much the lighting setup um, that you need to kind of concentrate on to recreate these type of looks to the images. Um, the smoke machines, again, it's a cheap one from Amazon. I will put a link to everything in the description below so you guys can check those out from uh, all the gear that's used to light this scene and all the gear that was used to create this image too. So you can check those out. Uh, that would be a great help for me also with the being affiliation links. Um, and that's pretty much it this time, folks. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you can take something away from this um, which will add to whatever you're doing. These guys who create these dioramas are super talented and they spend days sometimes years building these dioramas um, and I'm just wanting to add something to it um, from my point of view that I think they're so cool but I also see them in a, a photographic way as well where I can I really see what type of image I could create from these dioramas um, and as you can see from this set, this series of images, they've turned out really well. I'm super happy with them. So yes, that's it, folks. If you do want to see more of these videos, don't forget to subscribe um, and give it a thumbs up. Give it a share, even if you want, and flick the notification bell so you can see when any of the videos are posted. And uh, I will see you, folks, next time in the next video. And don't forget to uh, comment in the comment section below if you want to ask any questions about any of the processes involved or if you want to ask any questions relating to anything to do with photography just leave them in the comment section below and i will uh, get to them so with that being said i will see you folks in the next video thanks